So, hello to you all. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, 3D strokes. 3D strokes are really nice, uh, mostly in uh, 2D applications like After or Fusion and Nuke. Uh, something that we, uh, we can do in both Max and Maya. Uh, it's a bit different technique, but uh, I'll show both. In Max, it's a lot more easier. In Maya, as always, things are a bit more complicated, but we need to get the our heads around it and once you get the hang of it it's, it's really easy so let's see first the end result so I have here three, uh, three, three 3D strokes coming at the camera they're intertwined between each other and when I press the render button I'm getting this for example, so this is one thing that we can do. Of course, we can out uh, output just the, the pretty strokes without the background, and uh, take care of the glow in after, or just output the glow, take the rest uh, take the rest into the our favorite compositing application. So before we go into Maya, let's first see what Max has to offer. In Max, this is Max 2009. It's really simple to do that kind of things because all you have to do is create some sort of a line. Let's see something like this. Okay, we have to remember that this is the front, so let's we can add spline on it and put some. Uh, it's already in adaptive mode, so it's really good because it's going to take care of the line. Let's convert all our CVs to smooth maybe okay, it's something like this and okay I think that should be sufficient now let's maybe just refine the line in a couple of areas just to make it more interesting. So something like this. Maybe take everything from our top view. Just scale it over the depth of the scene. Let me make this as smooth as possible. Okay, so in perspective, once you have the line, let's call it instead of a line, a path, all you need to do is create some sort of a cylinder. Let's say it's going to have eight sides with, start with five segments, radius of 15 and height of 50. We just put it at the region of the world, so just zero that transform in. Next, you need to choose. You can either use taper to control how it's going to look over time, over size, let's say. You can throw in, we need to throw in some sort of a tube smooth. Let's ask for isoline display because it's going to be much more nice. No? Okay. Let's try to work in the next one. It's better. Okay, so once we have this sort of a capsule or sort of a barrel, all you need to do is go into modifier list, board space modifier, path deform, and on the path deform you need to pick the path and just press move the path. So if you remember that this is my start and this is my end I'm actually looking at, at it the wrong way so this is better. Let's go to start frame number 0 turn on animate go to frame 100 and animate the percent. That's it. So we have our initial stroke, but it's less of a stroke and more of a capsule on a path. 
so go out of animate mode and into our cylinder so now we can just dial in the height turn down the radius add more segments if needed and since we have a mesh mode on 3 let's, let's try to see if we can see it's pretty dense in the, on the around axis so we can take that instead of an 8 let's go to 4 it's gonna be good enough because it's gonna divide it 3 times so we still have a round feel around it but not as much as polygons we we had in the beginning so we can play with the radius we can go in, even into taper just a sec let's turn on ISO and display it's much more nicer to see that I can bulge the head and turn down the tail you can play around with the gizmo just taking it up and down because at the end of the day before the path of form it looks like this so you can play with it let's see the end result say I have a camera here okay so it's going pretty nice if I say if I think I need more segments 